Hello, all my fellow sculptures. Um, short video coming to you guys. Uh, I just wanted to put out something just to kind of explain the absence from not only the Zafa Talk, but the Skull and Bolts podcast. For anyone who does not follow me on Twitter at Zafa underscore gaming, I want to say I'm sorry for the lack of content here, but um, on Friday the 23rd, I unfortunately and unexpectedly lost my father. Um, it was a complete shock to not only me, but my entire family. And essentially, it's been a very, very long week, we'll say. Um, just trying to deal with everything for not only myself, but for my family, for my mom, my younger brother, my kids, basically just everything. It's just been the most difficult time of my life in a time where, you know, Everyone's supposed to be happy and loving and excited and cheerful for Christmas. Um, it's It turned into literally the most difficult time of my life. Um, trying to navigate forward with the loss of my father. And yeah, that forced me to take a break. Um... I've been very, you know, inactive on basically all socials for obvious reasons. Um, Cactus has done a good job on maintaining the Skull and Bolts Twitter account on, you know, just keeping relevant with the NFL games that have been going on. Obviously, I have really not done much as far as social media and you know updates go there hasn't been any um uploads on the channel here at school and bolts it's been just you know too difficult to to navigate but you know thank you to Cax of uh, I'm sorry cactus joe for maintaining at least you know, some sort of relevance on our uh, Twitter account to keep posting and try and keep that going. The YouTube channel, obviously, I was planning on taking a longer break, but I don't really see the point anymore because I just feel like I need to get back into the normal routine. <sighs> That's just the way it is. Um... On Christmas Eve, very difficult, obviously, you know, the day after um, um, losing my father, we did watch the Vikings game, of course, we tried to, you know, present any kind of distraction that we could, so me and my mother and my younger brother, my son... Um, my uncle, we, we tried to find some sort of distraction. So we put the Vikings game on, of course, and you know, Minnesota Vikings versus New York Giants, Giants, obviously battling for a wild card spot. Vikings still trying to, you know, cling on to a potential number one seed still, you know, kind of outside the you know how do I put it outside the I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm so unprepared for this video I'm literally doing this in one shot just so I can put it out there for content um it's not likely that the Vikings get the number one seed but 
that's what we're fighting for. So coming into the game 11 and 3 against the Giants. Tough game. Um went with the whiteout game, which I thought was very interesting. I thought that the the crowd really performed well. They came out the majority of the crowd was wearing white. The end zones were white. Midfield was white. Uh, Vikings uniforms wore white on white. I thought the look was good. It felt weird seeing the Vikings play in um, all white uniforms at home. But it was cool to see. I, I liked the participation from the, from the Vikings fans at the game. That was pretty cool. And then the game itself. Once again, another close, close game. Vikings, after this one, have now won 11 one-score games this season. 11-0 and in one-score games. Uh, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. The Vikings have... <laughs> They've outshined their point their opponents in these one score games. They keep making the magic happen again against another you know realistic playoff team. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, again the defense who has been ranked pretty low all season towards the bottom gave up 334 yards to Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones finished 30 for 42, 334 yards, a touchdown, and a pick, which was big. Saquon went 14 for 84 yards, a touchdown, which came late in the game, uh, just over two minutes to go in the game. So, you know, again, problematic that it came down to the wire. But that's just how the Vikings do. Again, Kirk Cousins. You know, playing strong. 34 for 48, 299 for three touchdowns, no picks. You know, the running game was not working for us. It was not. Dalvin Cook only had 64 yards on the ground. Madison only had 17. It was it was all on the offensive uh, passing front, which, again, Justin Jefferson, 12 catches, 133. 133 yards with a touchdown. And then TJ Hawkinson. What a performance. I mean. Talk about like such an incredible midseason acquisition. Especially in interdivisional trade. TJ Hawkinson career high 13 catches. 109 yards with two big touchdowns on the day. Absolutely lovely. The first touchdown, he was wide open in the back of the end zone. Cousins hit him. It was beautiful. Second touchdown, he had to go up for it. Contested. And he made the catch. It was beautiful. It truly was beautiful. Besides those two, not a lot going on. Adam Thielen held a one catch for six yards. You know, Jalen Rager was not featured at all. Johnny Munt had one catch for 16 yards. KJ Osborne, three for 17. You know, not a whole lot there. But um, one thing that I am proud of with the Vikings defense, you know, got some pressure. It seemed like, I, I don't know, Donatel seemed like he... He, he let his ego go a little bit and got a little more aggressive. And Daniil Hunter benefited from that with two sacks on the day. Daniil Hunter had two sacks. That was big. Uh, Pat Pete had an interception in the game, although he did not play great, at least in the first half. Struggled. Definitely struggled, but he ended up getting a an, an interception which was crucial as well. We had a blocked punt. Um, I think it was from Martellus. If I'm not mistaken, big block punt. 
on their side of the field was huge. Um, I thought Duke Shelley did look pretty decent, all things considering. I like Duke Shelley. I think that he has a lot of potential to continue to grow. And then the big one, the big one was uh, Greg Joseph. Greg Joseph. We all know, as Vikings fans, how our luck with kickers go. And uh, it came down to the wire. Of course, the Giants ended up tying it up with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And the Vikings, you know, with under two minutes to go, all the, you know, all the pressure on Kirk O'Chains, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Clutchins, whatever you want to call them. Drove him down the field good enough. Justin Jefferson had a big catch on third down after Cousins took a sack. Got us into, I don't even know if you necessarily call it field goal range. Because it left Greg Joseph with a 61-yard kick. Now, granted, I don't mind them taking the kick because there was, what, four seconds left? And you're looking at overtime, worst-case scenario. Unless he kicks it, like, really short and they run it back. But going into overtime, I don't I don't mind the call. 61 yards. I'll be honest, I had no faith. I had no faith that Greg Joseph would make it. Yet somehow, some way, Greg Joseph boots a perfect kick right down Main Street for 61 yards out to win the game. Back-to-back -back game winners for Greg Joseph. Back-to-back. -back. Um, it doesn't get much better than that. It really doesn't. So, shout-out to Greg Joseph for putting the nail in the coffin and getting the dub. Getting the dub. And... Um, when, I, when I look at this game, you know, obviously it was... You know, very distracting watching the game with everything that happened the night before losing my father. Um, I do want to say to everyone on Twitter and on Facebook that reached out, I, I, I truly appreciate your guys' messages and condolences, all the DMs, all the, the private messages that I've received. It really does mean a lot. I thank you guys for that. Um... Fuck, it was it was a stressful weekend. Um, one thing that I do appreciate coming out of this game was after Greg Joseph made the kick, which improved the Vikings to 12 and 3, I got to see my mom smile, which obviously was the first time that I had seen that since, you know, the night before, after, you know, just, she lost her husband, who they were high school sweethearts. So obviously, yes, this is a sadder video, but I mean, I have to explain the absence and uh, the fact that he made the kick and it put a smile on my mom's face. That is something I am so appreciative of. And it was it was truly an, am an amazing game to watch. It 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 really took our mind off of all the pain that we were experiencing, you know, as most as it could. And I'm so very thankful for the Vikings and, just, you know, this season. And it really hurt to watch the game without my dad. And, you know, like that's what every single week during a Vikings game, I go to my parents' house and we would all watch it together and not having my dad there was really really hard and it's going to continue to be really really hard for the next god knows how long um and next week we got the packers coming up here on sunday in lambo and again it's it's going to be so extremely difficult to to watch it without my dad there 
but God, it, like it actually crossed my mind. The Vikings, if they could win the Super Bowl this season, it would truly be the most incredible thing to happen to my family outside of, you know, like losing my father. I can't picture a better scenario as far as something that would make him happy, even though he's not with us anymore. Um, my my family has a I don't know, even know how old it is, but a bottle of wine. It's a Minnesota Vikings themed bottle of wine. It's got to be at least 20 years old. It's very old. And it's like a known thing in my family that that bottle of wine will not be cracked until the Vikings win the Super Bowl. And on that night, we will all drink it together and celebrate no matter how disgusting it is, how old it is, it doesn't matter. And God, you know, just the thought of what if it what if it does happen with my dad just passing and him walk, looking down on us. What if it happens? That's kind of where I'm at. But um, I, I wanted to come on here and, you know, go over the last game and, you know, explain our absence. The Skull and Bolts podcast, I think we're going to plan on recording an episode within the next day or two. I, I You know, it's time for me to start getting back into, like, the normal routine. I apologize for the sporadic uploads. It's going to continue that way until I am fully back on my feet. It's going to take time. That's all I can say. Losing a parent is extremely hard, especially one that, like, you look up to and watch these games together and have a formal bond with. Like, my oldest memories are of me and my dad watching football. So... I, again, I thank everyone who reached out and everyone who was there, you know, with their positive messages and kind words for the loss of my father. He truly was an amazing guy and a, you know, full-blown diehard Vikings fan. And the rest of the season is going to be very difficult and the rest of my life is going to be very difficult moving forward, but... I have to try and find some semblance of normalcy. So that is why I wanted to come back tonight. Um, thank you guys. If you if you guys relate as far as Vikings fans go to what I say, we got the Packers next. Um, I will obviously have another Zafa Talk episode out before the game. It's a huge game. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed like the video check out the skull and bolts podcast featuring myself and cactus joe and yeah it, it it's good to be back it's it's i can't say that it's going to be consistent but i have to have some semblance of normalcy so thank you everyone i appreciate you guys and again thank you for all of your love and support during this literally the most difficult time of my life and uh i will talk to you guys very soon uh to all my vikings fans skull baby skull let's beat the packers still a shot at the number one seed let's get it